can everyone communicate with their spirit guides or is this a skill that requires a psychic ability? Mm, cool. All right. So I'm just going to tune into all spirit guides. They're not specific to you. Uh, actually, I have to rephrase that. We're going to tune into your spirit guides. I just Mine. got corrected. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Okay. All right. Hello, dearest one. We know that on some levels, you already have your own answer to this question, but we are thrilled that you are asking it for a more global perspective. And we are happy as always to provide a global perspective because here's what you do with global perspectives. You take the gestalt of things, the wide angle, the fullness, the, the enormity, and then you um, consider that uh, on, on a in a process that is quite methodical. And you break it down into smaller layers and smaller pieces. And then you take the pieces and you rearrange them and you allow for your mind to coordinate them in slightly different ways. This is the creative aspect of you. And then when you are done, and of course you are never done, but here is what happens. You have a variety of options available to you and available to those that you know and love and teach as well. For you are here, as you know, as a teacher. And for, for this, we say, great job. And to this, we say, here's how we will answer your question. Yes, of course, you and everyone else who has the inclination, who has the desire, who has, who has and makes the time, who has and takes good enough, and that's all that's required, is good enough care of their spiritual life, of their emotional field, of their physical health and well-being. Just enough, just enough for it to be sufficient, for there to be enough self-love, for there to be enough self-compassion, then yes, everyone, of course, can do this. And it is our greatest desire, and now we speak from the collective of all spirit guides everywhere, for all to engage in this practice and this pursuit more deeply. Why, you ask? Because it is incredibly fun. It is a blast. It is a journey. It is a um, gift. It is truly a gift to remember that you are not here simply as a physical being moving around in a physical realm, but that there are so many layers and bits and pieces to you that make you make you up as the creative being, as the receptive being, as the expressive being, as the exquisite being that you are. And we say this not to you, but to all. So yes, it is indeed possible. And no, there is nothing that is... Um, Ex exclusive about it. If you have the desire, if you create the time, if you engage in some sort of practice that allows you to attune and allows you to listen and allows you to pre presence yourself in a way that is open-hearted, open-minded, then of course, why would anybody not be able to? It is a birthright, of course, and we are here to support your journey within it. Fantastic. Can you share any advice or techniques for someone wanting to establish a connection with their spirit guides? Yeah, I'm just going to riff off of what they said. Perfect. <laughs> Far be it for me to argue with spirit. Um, some of the things that were mentioned are like creating time, right? We are used to saying, oh, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. But what actually are your pursuits? And are they in the highest service? And we can say you know, we have to be honest with ourselves about that. And sometimes doing the dishes might seem like the thing that has to be done, but you might instead really connect with nature for a bit or instead sit and meditate or instead just just breathe, get, get to a place where you can be alone and, and centered and connected. So the process of making time elevates your accessibility to the spirit world because they know when you are available and they know when you're not. And when we're distracted, we're not available. And we, we hear or sense or feel things and we're not so accurate. So making time for some sort of practice, meditation, spiritual practice, time in nature, great self-care. They talked about self-love and self-compassion. Those have to be present for you to be a clear channel. And by clear, I mean for you to receive what is in the highest service. You can channel from low vibrations. I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> I don't do it. <laughs> in fact, I do everything to guard against that. 
because we get enough of that in the outside world. And, you know, to, to be able to channel, which yes, I do believe all of us can, and this is why I teach others how to channel, is it is a gift, as they say. It's a blessing. It's a birthright. We can do this. So making time, creating a practice, spiritual practice. Ritual is very important to me for part of it. So some people like to light a candle. Some people like to create an altar. Some people like to have a prayer or read uh, or say a mantra or do a song or a movement or dance. Something that prepares you, your body, mind, and spirit to receive. That's also very important. And sleep. Hmm. Yes. If we're now, exhausted, we're not going to channel clearly. 